good day world good morning god's richest blessings to you my name is crescent reed and i'm here because i was sent by jesus christ yeshua our messiah to teach the book of john so in obedience to the lord I'm here to deliver this message to the world. But before I start, I would like to pray a short prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the only God full of might and power. And we come to you today, Father, to sit at your feet to be taught by you. We come into your presence with thanksgiving and praise and joyfulness to hear what you have to say to us today, Lord. We're your children. And we're asking you to speak godly wisdom into us. Let everything that is said today, everything that we learn, be godly wisdom, Father. Speak to the listeners' hearts. Give them listening ears to hear what you're saying to the world, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bless each person, Lord, as we listen to what you're saying. Thank you, Father God, that in your presence is holiness, righteousness, and truth. So each person that is gathered to listen to your instruction today, let there be reverence. We bless you. We bless you, Father, and we bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of this message is, It's Time to Arise. It is time for us to arise and take our positions in the earth. It is time for us to fulfill our destinies. God is calling us to be who he has created us to be. It's time to arise. I'm going to share the book of John as it was given to me by the Holy Spirit. So come with me as we hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. In the book of John, before I read the scriptures, I'm going to share what the Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives to me. In the book of John, John takes listeners back to Genesis to reteach four simple steps. Number one, to observe that Genesis actually points to the unity of creation. Number two, to inquire about the prophetic voice and the actions of creation. Number three, to interpret or understand the meaning of the information or the words and action reported in Genesis 1. Number four, to learn how to apply the information or the literal structure of Genesis to one's own life by actually doing rather than just learning the general principles in the Bible. God gives us a method to give a command, make a password, and to bring about the change God wanted to see in the world. Let's do some reflective questions here. The primary questions are, why is this important to John? Why should the people be concerned about John's message? They were. And we should be. They were concerned about their own lives. They were concerned about their families. They were concerned about what's happening in the region. They were concerned about the chaos that they were seeing with their own two eyes. So if the understanding is accepted, they would have seen that Jesus is the word of God. And the second purpose is to teach you and I that our word are not forgotten and those spoken words have power and they are responsible for the activities in the earth today. 
Whatever is to be done comes because of word. Since John took his audiences back to Genesis for the inner meaning of God's thoughts, which are not easily discernible, let us begin this session by reading Genesis 1, 1 through 10. I'll be using the King James Version. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let, there, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 10 and last. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Let's stop there. Let us bring to our remembrance that the Bible tells us the word of God is to be truthfully taught. Reference 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 2. Now, let us read the two first verses of John chapter 1 to 2. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing came to be. Whatever has come to be found life in him. Life which for human beings was also light. I've read down to verse 4 there. Okay. What is so important for John and his audiences why he needs to take his audience back to Genesis? Here are two reasons. John used the first verses in John 1 to 2 to record the origination of Jesus, that he was from Genesis 1. The parallel account in Genesis from Genesis 1 to 28 and John 1 says much about Jesus's function. The reference to Genesis mirrors two things about the word of God. Number one, the word of God is a source of delight and joy. Number two, the word of God brings understanding. In Genesis 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 3, God is speaking of the original creation. It speaks of who or what is generated by the person speaking. But there is more to it. Firstly, in John's explanation, John goes back to God's account of truth. 
to teach us that Jesus is the word of God and to show his function. That the word of God is fulfilled by Jesus. John is indicating that Jesus is a single conceptual plan from the beginning to fix your problem, my problem, and the world's difficult problems. Genesis is used to show that Jesus labored with God at creation. But why is this understanding so important to John? Why? What is the lesson he wants us to learn? What knowledge have we missed? Is it just about what took place once God spoke? No. John takes us back to three things which are A, who, B, what was said and what took place, C, belonging, A, who, who was speaking into the atmosphere. God was speaking, expressing his own thoughts and feelings in the form of spoken language. This teaches us to choose and use particular words to say or write to each other in order to see exceedingly good activities. B, what was said and what took place in the world. Look at Genesis 1. It teaches that spoken word serves as evidence that the things which entered the earth had good quality and those things contributed to the public good up until today. C. Belonging. Beloved, the things in this world belongs to God. John gives clarity that Jesus belonged to God and is joined together with one common purpose. The deeper meaning is their partnership, kinship, or fellowship created public good. We all belong to God as well. God placed Jesus in Genesis. Why? You are rightly placed in a specified position on the earth. You fit in a specified place or environment to fulfill God's plan. This is why Jesus is saying it's time to arise. Stop and think about that until you understand it. Genesis opens our eyes to see that those who hate unity, although they may not realize it, but this unity is really deadly. It's death. Beyond those contribution, why is John restating the same idea of Genesis? Why taking people back to get them reading and studying diligently the word of God? John is placed in a specified position for a special purpose. Notice where he starts. He starts by mirroring Genesis. John joins two books, Genesis and John, to point out the unity or comradeship of everything. At creation, God linked things by common interest from beginning of the world. For example, light and darkness, heaven and earth. John must have understood this and knew God wants us to understand and be sure of the steps and processes of the natural world. Partnership, unity, working together in agreement, having one common purpose. God shows us to go above and beyond to establish a united partnership. This is in fact how most relationships should function. Think about this. Nothing was in the world. Only a malicious force, chaos, a dark mass of water, but unity and an agreeable statement is the evidence that God's word is directly linked to the first step of fixing problems in the earth. And wisdom helped God create the earth. His word is associated with wisdom. By wisdom, God brings about a series of good things that benefit or contribute to the general public good. That is how you fix things. Having the wisdom of God is a mature thing. 
We will get to other actions later in John. But not only was wisdom there with God at creation, see Proverbs 8 and verse 22, but to speak of God's word is to speak of God's wisdom. In the book of John, he starts off by showing us two things. Number one, who Jesus is. That the word testifies of Jesus and he has an unparalleled credential. Wisdom. Full of wisdom. Number two, it gives us an awareness of the power or specialness of God's word. For this reason, John draws on Genesis to show us a principle that just one word or a statement affects or influence your surrounding, influences our world. We know word can give light or do otherwise. They can harm or do good. Most importantly, the right word can bring about peace in your life and on earth. Let's clarify something about Genesis 1 to 14. God gave us the method to start things moving in the right direction. Genesis places emphasis on the word God spoke. The description focused on who is speaking plus the word as verb. Rather to be more specific, it shows what the word was doing. Think about a password for your computer. Can you start the computer if you don't have the correct password? No. Without knowing the right word, can you use your own computer? No. At creation, what was generated by the person speaking? He created everything. All the necessary things that the earth needed come to be. John joins Genesis for our understanding that word is the action or process of bringing good works into existence. God sets up the earth this way. An invented word as a process of bringing the universe to a new rank. Word is how we gather things together and word is how we separate them. By speaking the right word, the earth can be lifted out of ruin and be repaired. You can restore one human with the right word. You can repair an entire city with the right word, your word. The idea John began his account by speaking well of Jesus. He calls our attention to Jesus or to the handwritten word of life and draw our attention to the content of the Bible. Words cannot be taken back. See Matthew 12 verse 36. Jesus was at the origins of creations and he is eternal. Humans have made numerous attempts at a solution and failed. John wants us to keep in mind that Jesus is the one who God uses to reposition or reshape the world. Everyone needs to recognize his existence and his power. See Hebrews 11, 3 to 12. John supported Genesis by telling us that Jesus is the word of God or the creative energy of the world. There is a mystical reality to why God uses word to address the problems at creation. And it is another reason why, by his word, God created the heaven and the earth. This should give us a better understanding of the processes of nature. Although our words cannot be compared to the word of God, the word we speak or write are the way in which stuff or things is taking place in the earth and in our own life. John declares Jesus as the main focus in the Bible. He pointed to Jesus' origins, identity, and the mission to be fulfilled. We can also go to Hebrews chapter 11 and read from verse 3 to 12. In John, he took the discussion and showed Jesus is the noun or the word full of wisdom and healing power. And he is also the verbs forming the main parts of the actions that we should be doing. The primary question is, what are the solutions for the chaos, darkness in the land, darkness in our homes, every nation, our cities? What are the principles or intent of Genesis? What should we have learned from Genesis 1 and from the book of John? Do not let anyone deceive you 
John calls our attention to the word of God. In Jesus is the whole power to fix the earth. Jesus is the approach or the remedy to get rid of darkness. He was at creation and he still is the solution to the world's problem. Jesus was the light that overcome the darkness. Accept Jesus into your life to do the work that each of us is uniquely designed to do. Jesus is the evidence of change. John established if you are a follower of Jesus and you know someone in trouble, rise up. Rise up. And use your voice to do good. Do you know someone marginalized in your group? Rise up and do what is required to lift up the person to a new rank. Do you know a person who is broken? Get up and use your voice to restore them. In other words, Jesus is the show and tell. Do you know what show and tell is? From in the beginning, God shows us to tap into Jesus's power because he did not just modify pre-existing waste or darkness in the earth. With Jesus, the earth functioned how God intended it to be. The earth was not fixed overnight, but God chose to work at it with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And every day, every day worked hard to call good things into being. This is not an easy task. Friends, it took God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit an entire day to create one good work and then another, and the next, and the next, and so on. Take, for instance, Genesis 1, verse 3. Look at the pattern in which God accomplishes all his creative labor. It began by speaking. His speech or word began to sow good seed or things generously into the atmosphere. In other words, the word God composed, spoke, right or design entered into a world devoid of detail had nothing but his spoken word was quick to bring about a series of good things visibly manifested into the earth this conveys structure and is important because the word of god did marvelous things for the earth word is related to the first point of entry whereby because of good thoughts and the word spoken into a world of emptiness or chaos, good came forth. Pause and think long and hard about that. Go back into Genesis chapter 1. Reread verse 3 to 5. What did God do? He used his mouth. God spoke. Did he not speak and said, let there be light? Language or word brought forth light. The Bible explains that God saw something he made that was very good. Notice the process. First, God spoke and the existing disorder of things took a rapid change. Don't make it look so hard. Whereas before it was emptiness, darkness, and chaos, after the spoken word, chaos was no longer the central piece of the earth. But rather, because of God's word, light was permeating from every corner of the earth. So what happened? Good thoughts and spoken words directed into emptiness and chaos caused good to come forth. How did this happen? It actually happened through thoughts and words. And our life, the community we live in, our family, the world in chaos? Pause and take a look around you. What is staring back at you? What is staring back at us? Isn't it chaos, darkness, emptiness, ruin? To set order and put clear boundaries in place. Apart from God's public speech, the Bible offers two significant sources of help in Genesis, which are the Holy Spirit and Jesus. But Jesus is the sustenance of our soul, the life and the solution to reverse darkness. 
The world hears God's word only. And because words have an effect on everything, it recognized God's command and started to function properly. Let's back that up with Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. And it reads, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word. Speak a word only. Only a word. And my servant will be healed. Just a word. Just a word. And my servant will be healed. To fix creation, God did not speak titillating words. God speaks exceedingly well off. Those words were the crowning achievements of very good things. God spoke blessings over his creation. With the right attitude, the word of God generated wealth in the whole world. What is the lesson to be learned? It does not matter what effort we put into the earth. It will only work in a manageable way if the system detects the right command. Do you get it? Let the word of God dwell in you because his word and the right attitude, then the earth will work in a manageable way if it detects the right command. Think about your devices. For example, a cell phone. Can you put the wrong information in it and get the right results? No. Why wouldn't you do that? Because it would not work. That is exactly how the earth functions. The earth is a thing and we are the people God put in it to manage it. We are the image of God and must do precisely what God wants us to do. Let's think of a troubling event in the Bible. If you are familiar with the story of Jesus' conception and birth, a young pregnant woman's life was in chaos. The mother of Jesus faced much sufferings because of people's insensitive words, cruel, wicked, evil words. What did God do to fix the problem? Did God not send an angel, Gabriel speaking kind words to Mary's husband, Joseph? What did those kind words do for Joseph and Mary? It stopped the chaos, did it not? The chaos stopped. We too create our surroundings and the things in our lives through words. In the existing passage of Genesis, word is the first point of entry or the model to transformational change of the emptiness or chaos at creation. Words change its dysfunctional state to becoming good. Good came forth into the earth through thoughts and words. Restoration was revealed to us by spoken words. Recovery and reshaping are all connected to words. John 1, John is trying to get across to us that Jesus was from the beginning and he worked in unity with God. His purpose is to declare to you God's principles and to give you and I eternal life and have us fellowship with the Father. Because in the Father and in his son Jesus is a place of order where all of nature is in perfect balance. See 1 John 1, 1 to 4. Actually, in Genesis, the very word which God spoke created everything and perfect balance. In understanding Genesis, remember to interpret it that a spoken word means to speak exceedingly well off or to bring about lots of good things. The spoken word also means to bless. A vocal sound or spoken word or statements created lavish wealth across all of the universe. All of this happened when God created the world and man at creation, right? God had nothing bad to say about humans, did he? Ephesians 4 and verse 29 says, 
Do not let even one bad word come from your mouth, but only good words that will encourage when necessary and be helpful to those who hear. Pause and think. Let us think about something someone says to you. Even the smallest amount of spoken words, perhaps a promise or assurance where they said everything will be taken care of. And you have my words, but it turns out badly. Think about a command or a password. If you don't get the right word, can you get into the system? A remark, some important information passed around about you or about someone else. Were they meant to be kind words? Could what was said about you be taken to be kind words? Let's flip the coin. Now think about something you said about others, a remark some important information you passed around about them. Were those words meant to be well? Speak well of the individuals? Did you bless them? Did those words increase or spread wealth in the person's life? Stop and think about your last few words today. Are they good words or evil words? In John 1, 3 to 5, all things came into being through him. To Jesus. Reference 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 6 and Colossians 1 and verse 16. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and that this life is in his son. What does it mean? The life was the light of men. See Psalm 36 and verse 9. This is very important that we know that we have eternal life in Jesus. Here, John is saying your life begins with the word of God. If things were created through the words, do you understand how our words is creating different scenarios or situations in our lives and in the world? John is declaring that no created beings word can do what God's word can do. But you should know the impact of your own words in the earth, of my own words in the earth. Is John only concerned about the spiritual life? No. Was natural everyday things created at creation? Yes. What is the first thing created at Genesis? Light. John experienced the true light. How was this light created? Light was created by God speaking. So let me talk to you more and help you understand the importance or seriousness of your own words. What moral authority does your word carry? Does it give authorization? Yes. Makes decisions? Yes. Enforce obedience? Sometimes. Does words give a person or organization power or control in a particular area? Yes. God uses two things to bring his work into creation as a model of how to fix existing problems. Two things. These two things were his word and the action of his work, which is on permanent display and should be understood as the fullness designated by him of what is required to have a good earth. It is word and action. At creation, the word was with Adam and Eve, right? Why did they not have success? They rejected the word of God and joined themselves to an enemy's lying word. On the other hand, God's word has been with men since creation. Why do we still have so much chaos? Question, think about the words you spoke between yesterday and today. How much of those words can be considered a gift to mankind? Were they good gifts or evil gifts? The theme of John's message is basically everything that was created came about because of spoken language and was very good. Although we are all aware of Adam and Eve's sins, many questions should be asked about what Genesis and John is trying to get across. At creation, did we see an image of God as man? Yes. How did God create man? Meaning in and by God, we were created very good. That is what Genesis 1, 27 to 28 tells us. But do we typically talk about humans that way? John shows a picture that this is how God prefers we should be speaking about each other. And yes, John was speaking about a man in the flesh, 
but he uses his own word to speak well of Jesus. Compare John 1 to verse 14 and Genesis 1 to 28. Pause and think. How are our words alike and different to the word of God when we speak about or to each other? What are the differences or the similarities? It is customarily for us, is it customarily for us to speak well of others? Even if we do not know them, if we're not acquainted with them, do we feel comfortable speaking well of the people we do not know? Do we ponder about the people we meet? Do we discuss them negatively? Do we come to a conclusion about them without having real facts about their history? When I use the word history, I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about make-up stories based on our emotions. I'm talking about weighed out truth, real facts. In the Bible, we discover that John begins to reason and to speak well about Jesus based on historical truth. Where did he find the truth? Written in the Bible. God chose John, dispatched him, sent him as an ambassador to introduce Jesus to the world. Why did John not speak negatively of Jesus? He could, other people did. As we dive in deeper into the chapter of John, we will get a better understanding as to why John was chosen for his role. It takes work and studying to fulfill the role God gifted you to do. Perhaps like John, the explanations will not sound convincing. Many people may not adopt them all, but we are not isolated from good and evil words. So let us conclude this section by asking one more question. What was at the entry point or beginning of the physical world? A malicious force occupy the space but God spoke into it and good things appeared think what are your words bringing into the physical world notice John's words aren't lofty in verses 1 to 2 he's simply speaking well of Jesus that is what we should do he uses a brief statement and gives the true identity or origins of Jesus and the mission of Jesus John shares that Jesus became a human being to demonstrate how to become a doer of the word of God. See Revelation 19, 13 to 15, Hebrews 1 to 3, verses 1 to 3. John 1, 6 to 13. So far, John has shared that the word is in eternity. Do you know the word we speak are in eternity? What is John sent to do? See verse 7 and 8. And see John 5, 33. Were the people living in the Bible times prepared for John's ministry? No. How did John go about his everyday life as he fulfilled his task? See John 1, 29 to 34. Do you know that although God sent John as a messenger to prepare the way before Jesus, people were rejecting his words? People were negative? They tried intimidation and fear tactics? But did it stop John from continuing to do what God sent him to do? No. Did the mighty ones stop John from arising and speaking truth? No. What does it mean that the true light manifests itself? John 1, 1, to 4, John 1 verse 14. What does it mean the word become flesh? The context in which John is using it has two separate meanings. As we discussed before, the first meaning was as a noun and two as a verb. As a noun, this person John is speaking about is Jesus, Emmanuel, the king of the world. He uses the term word as reference to a human being. It should be distinguished from the verb meaning to talk. When we talk, we're actually enunciating words. Since that is not John's main focus, what is it? What is the deeper meaning John is pointing to when he uses the English term word? Ask yourself, is there a deeper meaning than what meets the eye? Why would John use the term word to describe Jesus? Look back at Genesis. Who was speaking? Even though God said it, think about this. What if God was aware of the problems in the earth at creation, but he did not have the courage to speak up? What if God had leave this painstaking labor to others? Is John suggesting that Jesus is the all-inclusiveness all of God's attribute, power, 
and majesty? Pause and think. Is there something that you know that you need to be speaking up about, but you don't have the courage to do it? Think about that. Is John suggesting that Jesus and the words Jesus speak throughout the Bible were uplifting? What aspect of Jesus is in you? Is your most useful feature your word? Think. Let me repeat that. Is your most useful feature your word? Was John pointing to Jesus as the one providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people? The biblical understanding of Jesus' nature shows us the impact of his word on people that were marginalized. When Jesus spoke, did he include the people with physical and intellectual disabilities? Did he include those belonging to other minority groups? Think about some reasons why this should be important. Look around. Look on the television. Read the newspaper. Look into your home. Look around. One possible reason for John introducing Jesus as a word is Jesus is responsible for the gathering of everything at creation. And they were very good. When we gather people and leave them, are they very good? There's another possible reason why John wants people to pay attention to the power of Jesus' word. John wants you and I to have an image of the impact of our own words. When God began creating the world, he gave us something special, something physical. He gave us his word and things that were very good. He gave us his word that we may see the attributes of who Jesus is. Jesus was the light that entered the world and dwelt among us as flesh. The word enters the world as a necessary step to teach us, to teach you and I the right way to walk on the road to excellence. Are you walking on the road to excellence? I want to be on that road. I need your prayers to be able to walk on the road of excellence that the world's darkness will not come into my heart. I'm praying for you that darkness will not come into your heart and that you will walk on the road of excellence. Word is associated with good and evil. Your word influences others. Your word is influencing the world, the whole world, world. The word entered into the world and created lots of good. Pause and think, how is my word influencing the world? How are my words influencing my own life? How are my words influencing my children's life? How are my words influencing my neighbors, my community, and the world? Do we speak well of others? Do we bless them? Is our word bringing wealth into their lives? God came into a world that was empty, full of darkness and chaos, and he began to speak well and blessed it. We know some people. We all know some people that their thoughts are dark, dark as midnight. Their behaviors are ungodly. What are the words we're speaking over them? Cursing them? Speaking words that are manifesting as evil into the earth? It is time to arise. It is time for us to be the change that we want to see in the world. as ambassadors of the good news that Jesus Christ came to get us to be the messengers of. It is our duty to change how we speak, especially how we speak in our own life, to our children, to our families, in our community, in the nation, and in the world. Let us arise, speak life, 
speak life. From this day onward, speak life. In the name of Jesus, speak life. Speak good things for the public good. God sent his son, born of a woman under the law, to redeem us and adopt us as children of God. Pause and think. In closing, let me pose one last question. What does God want us to do? The Bible tells us, happy is the man who listens to God. Amen? Repent for evil. Repent for the evil language you're speaking in your own life. Repent of speaking evil words in the life of others. Repent for the evil you're speaking into the world. Repent. Thank you for listening to what the Spirit of God is saying to this world, to you and to me. Come back. Join me. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Amen.